don't know I'm Dave and for those who don't know again I'm Matthew and this behind us is the Hyundai i30N Fastback. That's right it's a more grown-up performance Hyundai but it's also got a manual box for the win. Let's take a look at this one. And Hyundai's N performance division are at it again and this time it comes with a boot, or as what they call it, a fastback. We'll get to that in a moment. Up front, obviously the Hyundai's uh, new trademark grille, which is fine. <laughs> the very important end badge, of which there's a lot, and we'll show you that in a minute. This vehicle comes in shadow grey, but there's also plenty of uh, red garnish around, which we'll, again, we'll show you. It's inside and outside. Comes with a nice low front spoiler. The headlights are obviously LEDs, The again with the DRLs are actually LEDs. These side air vents are very plasticky but they are functional. There are holes through here and also takes the air scoop down to the side here which runs down the side of the, uh, the vehicle. Which brings us on to the side of the vehicle. 19 inch feet and look, another M badge, another bit of red but very much very strong performance brakes rest of the side of the car. Black it out wing mirrors or side mirrors depends which way you want to call them. This one comes with a sunroof again probably better to see from the inside and the all-important fastback. With the fastback Hyundai have added an extra 100 mils to the length of the car. They've also shortened it as well but most of that room or extra space comes in this rear quarter. Let's take a look at that. Being slightly maturer in age, I think I am a little bit biased, but I like a fastback. I like the extra space that it gives, and I also like the flow of a car that way. Of course I like hatchbacks, but there's something about a fastback that seems to sit nicer with me. This i30M Performance comes with a very strong and dominant rear spoiler. LED tail lights, again an i30N badge, or the N badge. Fastback just in case you forget what you're in and also a flashing stoplight. Two tailpipes that attach to a very very throaty exhaust system and obviously inside an additional 55 litres of trunk space. So basically this now has 450 litres of uh, I don't know, luggage area to, to play with. But just like the hatch it comes with this strong sway bar across the rear end. That's because it is a performance car. Speaking of performance, let's take a look under the bonnet. A performance tuned 2 litre turbo engine that gives you 202 kilowatts of power, 353 newton meters of torque that actually raises to 378 newton meters in overboost. 0 to 100 comes in 6.1 seconds. It's not bad. And all strapped to a 6 speed manual gearbox. Now let's take a look on the inside and Matthew will give you a tour. Now I'll be honest here, with this car Dave has done the hard yards with the outside because the difference there is pretty major but as far as the interior is concerned it's a really familiar place in comparison to the i30N hatchback that we tested out. For starters the big thing in here obviously with the N series is the fact that you can only have a manual gearbox so it's always nice to see stick shift in a performance hatchback. Secondly, something that you'll notice with the i30N and fastback here is the fact that it lacks a little bit of color. It doesn't feel as sporty on the inside as it does with the outside. Sure you get these big bolstered seats and there's a little bit of contrast stitching around it in red in this case. And there's a couple of flashes of red across the dashboard but you really want a little bit more color from it and that's something that the hatchback had actually with the buttons on the steering wheel the end button in particular being blue to kind of break up that con constant black plastic look that it has 
Speaking of black plastics, you will find that there's quite a bit of it around here. The doors, for example, not all that soft and as you run your hand across the dashboard, you'll hear this familiar sound. It is quite a pricey car still, so I'm a little bit disappointed at that, to be honest, but the fact is that you're not going to be scratching around, you know, when you're really pushing this car and really driving it. Where will your hands be? Well, one place they'll be is the steering wheel, which is leather wrapped and feels really nice to hold actually. In the second place they'll be obviously that manual gear knob which is feels great to touch and that sort of ball shaped I'm trying to refrain from using the word golf here but the sort of ball shape gives it a great feel in the hand and there's a bit of leather around it as well to give you that grip that you need to go through the gears. The infotainment system is pretty familiar especially if you wa watched our i30N review because it's got the navigation, it's got, you know, Bluetooth, all that sort of stuff that you need that makes these kind of systems convenient. But, there's the one thing that you really want in this N car, which is that little icon there that says N mode. Now press that, and you can fiddle around with the various drive modes of this car, the suspension settings, the exhaust, the... You can have a look at how much torque the engine is producing, the G-forces, You've even got a lap timer. How cool is that? The big thing with the Hyundai N cars are these two buttons here. It's the one checkered flag, we'll get to that in a bit. But the driving mode button engages the five different driving modes that you can have with this car. You press that and that awakens the N mode. Now this is really the mode you want to be in. Instantly the exhaust becomes louder, the suspension becomes harder, the car just feels more taut all around and it just feels great to drive in this mode. The response to your gear shifts, everything is lightning quick. But the front of the car is relatively similar on the inside to the i30N hatchback. But what about the back? Remember that sloping fastback roof? How does that affect the headroom? Let's go in the back and take a look. The first thing you notice in the back here is that it's rather dark because of course the sloping roof line and the rear quarter window is actually at the back over there so you don't get that much light coming in and even with the sunroof in this model it feels a little bit dark back here now in terms of size I'm, I'd say I'm a fairly sizable human being and um, this seat is pushed back as far as it'll go and my knees are actually up against it but they're not pressing up against it so it's just about comfortable but I can see how it could be uncomfortable for a longer journey foot room I've got plenty down the bottom now with the headroom the sloping roof line you know I've got plenty of headroom there almost a hands worth and that's despite the car being actually 28 millimeters lower how about that still a bit of space in the back here and you could fit two adults here but really a third one would be a stretch if you like to call it um, now at this point in our videos we usually go to the driving and you know show you around that but we'll get to that in a minute first because this is an N car let's play a little game called spot the N badge first of all while we're in the back there's two ba N badges here on the carpeting now you'll notice that there's an N badge on the door sills actually on both sides that's four both the front wheels actually have N badges on the brake calipers and all four wheels actually have N badges imprinted onto them there's one end badge right there, that's 11. Well, there's two end badges on the seats, one on each of the front two, that makes it 13. Two end badges actually on the front mats, one over there and one just hiding at the top over there. Then there's the door sills, there's one on each side, that makes it 19. There's one end badge just there at the bottom of the steering wheel, one end badge on the key there, and there's one end badge on the gear knob there. There's one end badge in the gauge cluster over there and there's actually one end badge in the infotainment screen as well. There's one end badge over there, that's 25. And there's actually one end badge on the top of the engine right here, that's 26. So we've counted 26 end badges across the car. That certainly shows it has performance credentials. Now let's drive it and see how those performance credentials really feel on the road. I learned to drive in a manual vehicle and um, that was basically what we grew up with. 
nowadays saloon cars or even hatchbacks are becoming a diminishing sight on the road and performance cars with manual gearboxes are even harder to spot so why would Hyundai launch a vehicle that ticks all of those boxes and now has a boot see now the difference there is that for those of I guess Dave's generation who now think that a hot hatchback is too Larry looking for them and just too outlandish in general you now have the option of having that boot so it's a little bit more refined and you don't look like you're having a midlife crisis if you buy one of these you look like you just want a bit of fun I always look like I'm having a midlife crisis <laughs> the i30N performance fastback it's uh, it's a really I, I reckon it's a really good looking vehicle it's um, it's got that saloon appeal it's got that sloping rear end it's got the I don't know the space for me to put stuff if I was a golfer I could put golf clubs in there uh, that's merely really my retirement thing gone in there <laughs> but it's it's still got that fun to drive performance vehicle stuff that I really enjoyed in the in the hatchback and I think that's really what Hyundai has captured with this car is they've got the essence of that i30N hatchback which made it so exciting and then combined it with this a really distinctive looking car frankly the fastback on the back not a lot of cars have that these days and that makes it look quite special on the road on the whole um, it's it I mean it is a hardish ride even in comfort um, but it's quite it's quite easy to drive around the town and stuff like that in in normal mode but it's when you push that end button on the on the steering wheel hill that on the steering wheel here that all hell starts to become come loose and it's fun the the exhaust note goes crazy and there's a rattling and smacking and crackling and stuff like that like any perfect breakfast cereal um, the speed goes up the excitement goes up the handling is there oh it's an exciting drive I mean sure you know the suspension is hard when you're driving around generally but it's one of those things that you put up with for those moments that you can unleash the car in corners and you know really go through those gears and hear those pops and crackles it's a special sensation in truth you're going to spend a lot of your time looking for open roads where you can just really push the accelerator down i know we've been looking for them and you know that's that's all right that's a good thing the um harping back to days of old days of yore as they would say um the I, the gearboxes that I had before, there was no rev matching like there is in the, the end, end performance mode. It was all very mechanical, but there's also a very mechanical feel to this gearbox. It, it feels tight. The six-speed box is precise. The gears are easy to find. You're not, you're not stirring custard as you're looking for anything. It's, it's in there. It's, it's there and ready to go. Remember that the end badge is significant because these cars were developed in part on the Nürburgring and any car enthusiast or anyone who's ever heard that word will know that it is as hard to drive around as it is to pronounce. I've actually only driven it on PlayStation but uh, I spend a lot of time in the ditch to be honest. Uh, awful. Which is something like that, sure, is why the suspension is hard. But it's also why the gearbox is so precise, it's also why the car handles so nicely, it's also why the car is as sort of fast and as agile as it is. Yeah, it comes loaded with sway bars um, and uh, suspension arms and everything to keep you flat and rigid in the corners. And I'm thoroughly enjoying attacking the corners with this vehicle. Okay, so we've talked about all the good parts of this car and there are a lot to get through but one thing that as you know if you've watched our videos is a constant bugbear of mine is the scratchy plastics and I've got to say that this fastback model is more expensive than the hatchback model but you still get scratchy plastics everywhere frankly and 
that does annoy me a little bit because you're paying more and nothing in terms of the cabin quality has changed and you can still hear that road noise coming through it's still that's the one part where it lacks for me is the cabin quality yeah and you're also saying that the they've, they've sort of dulled down on some of the the switch gear and things like that but what you do get is a sunroof which is actually quite a big sunroof you also get that 55 extra liters in the back and that 100 uh, 100 millimeters extra in length the 100 millimeters in length doesn't really affect the way the car drives or handles at all but the extra 55 liters is certainly good for a family guy sort of myself um, you necessarily I don't know if you're doing your drug running or something yeah. like that there's <laughs> there's more stuff you can get in there so it's you know it's it's horses for courses I guess um, yeah I mean that sums it up perfectly frankly and like you know any sort of performance car there's certain things that you have to live with for the fact that you get to enjoy that performance and in the fastback version the extra space as well so there you have it the Hyundai i30 M performance fastback it's got all the joys and fun that comes with a performance vehicle or the, even a hatchback but now comes with the boot and even though you get that sloping tailgate look you can actually see out the back there oh yeah this space thanks for watching make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified every time we make a new video thanks and see you soon Ha <laughs> ha!